We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. and welcome to the subject of basic civil engineering and subject code is 3110004 myself Kaushal Rawal from Sankar Shiva Jalabapu Institute of Technology and my today's topic is linear measurement first of all we have discussed uh, which topic we will cover in this session uh, methods instrument which is used in chaining chain surveying, ranging, obstacles, errors in chaining and tap corrections. Now first of all methods of making the linear measurement, uh, there are three methods. First one is a direct method, second one is a optical method and third one is a electronic distance measurement method that is EDM method. So now which instrument which is, uh, which is used in a chaining? First one is a chain or a thread, second one is arrows, third one is ranging roads, fourth one is a cross staff, fifth one is offset roads, and sixth one is a packs, and seventh is a plumb off. These are the necessity instruments which is used in a chain. First one is a chaining. Uh, chain is a composed of 100 or 150 pieces of galvanized mild steel wire, 4 mm which is 4 mm in diameter called links the ends of each links are bent into a loop and connected together by means of three oval rings the end of the chain are provided with the handle for dragging the chain on the ground each wire with the swivel joints so that the chain can be turned without twisting the length of the chain is measured from the outside of one handle to the outside of another handle. The following are the various types of chain which is uh, in common used. One is a metric chain, second one is a gunter's chain or a surveyor's chain, third one is an engineer's chain, a fourth is a revenue chain, fifth one is a steel band or a band chain. First of all we have discussed about the metric chain. You see the figure uh, of a metric chain. See the handles and uh, handles and rings over here. See, uh, and the uh, tail is co connected together. You can see here. Now this chain consists of a galvanized mild steel wire of a four mm bar, known as a link. The length of a link is the length between the centers of the two central rings provided at both ends of the chain. The chains are made in a length of 20 and 30 meters. Next one is a gunter's chain or you can say the surveyor's chain. A 60 feet, 66 feet long chain consists of 100 links. Each link of 0.66 feet is known as a gunter's chain. This chain is suitable for taking length in miles and areas in acres. Now the engineer's chain, uh, it is 100 feet long and it is divided into 100 links. Each link is in 1 feet in a length used in all the engineering surveys. It is used to measure the length in a feet. Next chain is a revenue chain. Revenue chain is uh, commonly used for a measuring field in a cadastral survey. It is a 33 feet long and divided into 16 links. Now steel bands or a band chain. It consists of a ribbon of a steel with a brass handle at each end. It is a 20 or 30 feet long and 60 mm wide. It is wound on 
and open steel cross or on the metal rail in the closed case. Brass tallies are fixed at every 5 meter length of the pan. Now, uh, testing and adjustment of chain uh, if uh, chain is to found to be a long, so what are what are the factors to be considered? And if the chain is found to be short, which are the factors is, is to be considered? Now, first of all, we have discussed about the if the chain is found to be a long, then uh, closing up the joints of the rings if found to be opened out. Second one is a reshaping the elongated rings. Third one is a replacing the damage ring. If you can find the, the damage ring over there, so you have to replace that damage rings. Remove the one or a more small rings if the small rings over there. So we have to remove that the rings. Fifth one is adjusting the links at the end. Okay, uh, once sometimes it will be overlapped to each other, so we have to adjust uh, every time. If chain is found to be short, which are the factors? The factors are straightening the band links. Uh, second is opening the joints of the rings. Third one is replacing one or more small circular ring by a bigger one. So you you just see here uh, if if you find the small circular rings over there, so uh, it will be replaced by the bigger one. A fourth one is inserting a new rings where the necessary and, and fifth one is adjusting the links at the end okay so now tapped taps are used for the more accurate measurement of the length uh, there are various types of taps one is a cloth tap second one is a metallic tap third one is steel tap and fourth one is a inverter tap and fifth one sorry fifth one is a fiber glass tap so among the above the metallic tapes are widely used in the survey a metallic tap is made of one strip of waterproof line uh, in the one with a small brass copper or a bronze wire these are light in weight and flexible and are made 2 meter 5 meter 10 meter 20 meter 30 meter and 50 meter now the arrows uh, arrows are made of a good quality hardened steel wire of 4 mm diameter the arrows are made uh, 400 mm in length are pointed at one and other end absent into a loop or a circle now the ranging road the ranging road are used to range some intermediate point in a serving line the length of a ranging road is either 2 meter or 3 meter they are stood at the bottom with a heavy iron point. Ranging roads are divided into equal parts, 0.2 meter long, and they are painted alternately black and white, or red and white, or red, white, and black. When they are at a considerable distance, red and white, or a white and yellow flags about 35 centimeters square should be fastened at the top. Now next one is a pack which is used to fix the station. These are the road made uh, roads made from the hard timber and tempered at one end, generally 25 mm or 30 mm square and uh, 150 mm long wooden pegs are used to mark the position of station. Next one is a plumb bob. It is required in order to transfer the points uh, to the ground vertically. Generally, it is used in the centering of theodolite over the station mark. Now, chain serving. Chain serving is the type of serving in which only linear measurement are taken. Uh, if we have considered the uh, only an the linear measurement, then and then we have to do a chain survey. Chain serving is also sometimes called as a chain triangulation. You can see here the main survey line, base line over here, check line, tie line. So we have to discuss some uh, uh, definitions re regarding the chain survey. So terms related with the chain survey. First one is the main station. Stations 
taken along the boundary of area as a controlling points are known as a main station second is a subsidiary stations station which are on the main survey lines or any other survey lines are known as a subsidiary stations third one is a tie station these are also subsidiary stations taken on the main survey line lines joining the tie stations are known as a tie lines so next one is the baseline the longest survey line passing through the center of the area to be surveyed is called as the baseline check line the line joining the apex point of a triangle to some fixed point on its base is known as the check line third one is a tie line a tie line which is a line which joins the subsidiary or tie station on the main line now we have discussed the operations in chain survey so first one is a chaining second one is a ranging third one is a offsetting first of all chaining Uh, chaining involves the following operations. Uh, first one is uh, fixing the station. We have to fix the station, like uh, suppose we have fixed A to B station, then we unfolding the chain, then we have to do arranging. And fourth one is uh, measuring the distance, and fifth one is uh, folding the chain again. So second one is arranging. Uh, the process of establishing intermediate points on a straight line between two service stations in the field is known as ranging there are two methods of ranging one is to one is a direct ranging and second one is a indirect ranging so first of all direct ranging direct ranging is done when the two ends of survey lines are intervisible so if the stations are intervisible to each other we have to do the direct ranging So direct ranging can be done by the two methods. First one is arranging by I, and second is arranging by line ranging. Line ranging is the one type of instrument which is used to uh, range. See, you can see the figure. The ranging by I, A, B, and C is. So consider the two points A and C at the end of the survey line. Distance between A and C is the greater. Then the one chain line. So ranging groups are fixed at the station at A and C. Then the surveyor stands half a meter back side of a ranging road at A and in line with A C. The assistant then goes with the another ranging road and establishes the road at A point approximately in B. With the AC, the surveyor at A then signals the assistants to move traverse to the chain line till he is in the line with AC and B. Similarly, other intermediate points can be established immediately. By second, the ranging by line ranger. Line ranger is a small instrument. Earlier, I I told you this thing. Too. Uh, used for the establishing the intermediate points in a line, line with a too distant signal without the necessity of a sighting from one of them. It consists essentially of two reflecting surfaces, either small plane mirrors or square prisms, as shown in figure. One above the other end, and with this, that reflecting surface is normal to be each other. So for locating the intermediate points R in a line with points A and B, the observer stands approximately in a line and places the instrument on the road, or hold it by eye level, turning it until the image of a road at A is seen in the field of view. He then moves backward or forward at right angles to the line until the image of B appears. One of the mirrors or prisms is commonly made adjustable for the securing the necessary, particularly between the reflecting surfaces. Now, second one is the indirect ranging, or you can say the reciprocal ranging. Indirect ranging is required under the following situation: when the end and the stations are not intervisible due to the rising ground between them, 
and the distance between the end is too long so you can see here the a b and, and the intermediate points are m and n so suppose a and b are to the end of the station which is not intervisible due to the high ground existing between them so suppose it is required to be fixed intermediate point between a and b two chain men take the up the positions at m1 and n1 with a uh, ranging row the chain man at m1 stands with his face towards to b so that he can see the ranging row at n1 and b again the chain man at n1 stands with his face towards to the e so that he can see the ranging rows at m1 and e then the chain man crosses the ranging line by the directing each other alternatively and the, the uh, chain man at a1 one directs the chain man at n1 to become the position n2 so that the m1 n2 and b are in the same straight line again the same thing will be happen on the chain man n2 directs the chain man n1 to come to the position n2 so that the n2 m2 and a are the, in the same straight line thus the uh, two chain men are now m2 n2 which is are near to be the chain line then the position of m1 and m1 the process is repeated till the points of m and m are located in a way that chain men at m finds the chain men at n in the line m bend the chain men and finds the chain men at m in the line with n the step points a m and b are in the same straight line can see the figure over here there will be the m1 and n1 again the n1 n2 and m1 m2 and m3 m3 now offsetting offsetting is the lateral distance measured in the right or left of the chain line to locate the details such as our boundaries building lines roads and culverts etc is called as the offset so there are two kinds of offsets over there first one is a perpendicular offset and second is a oblique, oblique offset so perpendicular offset is uh, the lateral measurement taken into right angles the chain line is called as a perpendicular offset or a right angle offset and oblique offset is the when the lateral measurement taken is not at a right angle so the chain line is called as a oblique or a tie line offset you can see the figure here the oblique offset and perpendicular offset with the chain line now instrument for laying the offsets uh, following instruments are used in setting out the right angles one one is a open cross star second one is a french cross star third one is a adjustable cross star fourth one is a optical square fifth one is a prism square sixth one is a indian optical square now first of all we have discussed the open cross star it is a simple it consists of a two parts one is a head and a other one is a leg common type of cross star this is a common type of cross star consists of a four metal arms with the vertical slits for the sighting through the head is fixed to the top of the iron stands without uh, 1.2 to 1.5 meter long this is driven into the ground and for setting the perpendicular lines uh, one pair of opposite arms is aligned with the chain line to be specially used for setting off and uh, marking the control lines now the french cross staff the octagonal cross staff uh, is french cross staff consists of an octagonal brass tube with the slits on the all eight sides if have as a, an alternate vertical slits and uh, an opposite vertical window with a vertical horse air or affine wire on each of the four sides these are used for the setting out right angles on the other side are vertical slits which are the at 45 degree to the those we just mentioned for the setting out the 45 angles 
no, the optical square optical square is a and a compact hand instrument which is used uh, to setting out the right angles with a greater accuracy it consists of a circular box about 5 cm in dia and 1.25 cm in deep which consists of a two mirrors are fitted at the right angles the mirror edge called is a horizontal glass which is a half silvered and half uncovered the mirror eye is known as a index glass is known as a holy as silver uh, there are three openings on the sides of box uh, e b and c the opening is pinhole i and b is a small rectangular slot placed in the opposite to pinhole and c is a large rectangular slot places at right angles to join the line the surveyor simply turns the optical square upside down and which through the aperture from the object on the side now the obstacles obstacles like a pond building rivers hedge etc prevents the direct measurement of the land width etc between the two stations or two objects the obstacles may be the following type uh, first one is the when the ring is free but vision is obstructed second the when the ring is obstructed but vision is free third one is the when chaining and the uh, vision is both are obstructed when the chaining is free but uh, vision is obstructed both hand may be uh, visible from any intermediate point such as the case of a jungle or a dense plantation this kind of obstacle may be crossed over by a random line method you can see here uh, this chain line a c d b is like uh, in a jungle and we have to find that uh, chain line so we have to do the random line method uh, let the a b is the line whose length is required line a b called is a random line then chain line b b dash where b b dash is always taken as a perpendicular to a b dash and measured the b b dash then a b is equal to in bracket uh, a b dash square plus uh, a b b b dash square uh, whole rest to 1 by 2 any intermediate points can be located as c and d on the chain line and a b by taking the perpendicular offset from the chain line a b dash now uh, c dash c is equal to b dash b into a dash c divided by a b dash and same similarly uh, uh, d, dash, d dash d is equal to b dash b into a d dash divided by a b dash when the changes is obstructed by but vision is free you can see the figure when the pawn is interrupts the chain line it is possible to go around the obstructions uh, a b is the chain line c and d are the selected on the it on opposite lines of the points equal perpendicular cm and dn are erected at a c and d then distance m and n is measured here is cd is equal to mn method 2 on the point may also be crossed by forming the triangle as shown in figure therefore the cd is equal to md square minus cm square whole rest to 1 by 2 then the chaining and vision both are obstructed then in such a position arise when the building comes across the chain line it is a chain line two points m and r are selected on it at one side of a building equal perpendiculars m m1 and n and one are erected see the m1 and n1 is is extended until the building is crossed then all the on the extended line two points o1 and p1 are selected you can see here so that the o1 o is equal to p1 p is equal to m1 n is equal to m1 m 
then the point M and OP will be on the same straight line AB and 0 is equal to M and O1 errors in chaining the errors in chainings are classified into a complex setting errors cumulative errors personal mistakes so first of all complex setting errors these errors which may occur in either directions and tends to the balance are called as a complex setting error they do not affect the results much you have to count it uh, cumulative errors cumulative errors are which occurs in the same direction and tends to the accumulate the R called as a cumulative error and these errors have a serious effect on the accuracy of survey work. Now the personal mistakes are uh, displacements of arrows, uh, reading of a chain is wrong manner, uh, noting the readings is a wrong way, incorrect uh, counting of numbers of chain, incorrect length of a chain or a tape incorrect length of a chain or a tape is always cumulative if the length of the chain is more the measured distance will be less and hence the error will be negative if the length of a chain is short the, the measured distance will be more and hence the error will be positive now correction uh, to be made on the length so i is equal to i dash in, uh, into l dash by l where the L is, is equal to actual, incorrect actual length of a chain or a tab. L is equal, is equal to true length of a chain or a tab. I dash is equal to measured length of a line. And L is equal to true length of a line. So correction to the area. A is equal to A dash into L dash by L full dash to square when uh, a is equal to measured area of a ground a dash is equal to true area of a ground l is equal to incorrect actual length of a chain or a tape l dash is equal to true length of a chain or a tape now correction in the volume so v, do, v is equal to v dash into l dash upon l whole rest to uh, 3 so v is equal when v is equal to true volume v dash is equal to measured volume and l is equal to incorrect actual length of a length or a tab and l dash is equal to true length of a chain or a tab now we are going to the tab corrections since the tab is not used in a field under the standard transition of temperature cool etc so first one is a correction for absolute length second one is a correction for temperature Third one is a correction for pool. Fourth one is a correction for sag. Fifth one is a correction for the slope. First one is a correction for uh, absolute length. The correction for the measured length is given by the formula. C is equal to L dash. Uh, sorry, L into C divided by I. Where C is equal to correction for absolute length. L dash is equal to measured length of a line. I is equal to standard length of a and C is equal to correction to a tape length. Then is the correction for a temperature. It is necessary to apply the correction since the measurements are not made at the temperature at which the tape is underlined. Maybe it will be uh, sometimes it will be a uh, uh, temperature will be high, sometimes the temperature will be low. So if the temperature is more, the length of the temperature increases, and if the temperature is less length of temperatures tap is decreases so the formula for the correction for uh, correction ct is equal to alpha into tn minus ts into l where uh, ct is equal uh, alpha is equal to coefficient of thermal expansion tn is equal to main temperature in the field during the measurement ts is equal to standard temperature for the tap l is equal to measure length now correction for pool, sometimes uh, if the pool is, is applied during the measurement uh, more than standardized pool will be applied, the length of tab is increased, measure distance become less, correction is therefore positive. If the pool applied pool during the measurement is less than the standardized pool, 
the length of depth is decreased, measure distance become more, and correction is therefore added. The formula for the correction is CP equal to PA minus PS into L divided by AE, if, where CP is equal to correction for a pool in a meter, PA is equal to pool applied during the measurement, PS is equal to the standard pool. L is equal to measure length and A is equal to the cross sectional area of a tab and E is equal to modulus of elasticity of the tab material. Now correction for the sag over here, the difference between the horizontal distance and the measure length along the contents, uh, con container is called as a set correction, it is always negative. Now C sag is equal to I1 into W I 1 whole square divided by 24 P square where the C sag is equal to correction for the side meter I 1 is equal to distance between support in M W is equal to weight of a tap in a kg or an M per meter P is equal to pool applied in a kg or a newton thank you very much thank you very much to